What's up, you guys? Cody here with On The Hunt. Going to tell you guys about calling coyotes, calling sequences, how to call during certain times of the year. If that's something you want to know about, stick around. Okay guys, well like I said, this video is going to cover calling sequences uh, during all times of the year, specifically here in the Northeast, but I think a lot of these tactics will work pretty much anywhere you go. I don't want this to be a super crazy long video, but it's going to have uh, a decent bit of information in it, so it might get windy. Um, if there's certain things you want to know about, you might be able to skip through the video, find what you're looking for. But anyway guys, without further ado, first thing I want to cover is, I don't care what you're using for a call, okay? I'm a pro staff for Icotech. I really do like Icotech game calls. I was using them before I was on their pro staff. Brandon as well. Um, Brandon used Icotech prior to being a pro staff member. And Brandon actually got me on to Icotech game calls. Uh, this isn't a, a pitch for Icotech. I came from Fox Pro. Um, they're good calls. A lot of guys swear by them. Look, I don't give a shit what you're using for a call, truthfully. If you're out in the woods and you're hunting, good for you. Uh, I'm proud of you and I'm happy for you. So whatever gets you out there calling coyotes, <laughs> that's it. I don't really care. So with that said, guys, uh, no bad blood for any of the call brands out there. You, they all do a great job. They all get the job done, all right? So do I think sounds make a difference? Absolutely. Guys, there's, there's better quality sounds out there than others, um, and the caller that you're playing them on really isn't that big of a deal, okay? So first, first off, quick shout out. I want to shout out Tony Tebby. I want to shout out James Bostek, and I definitely want to shout out Tori Cook. Look, I can't use Tori Cook sounds on my, on my Icotech, but he makes some incredible sounds, um, and, and they they really are premium sounds, okay? Tony Tebby, you do an amazing job, brother, so kudos to you. And James Bostek, you do the same, man. Uh, Boss Predator Acoustics, if you haven't heard of them, go check them out. About as down-to-earth, uh, humble, honest fella you could ever meet. So uh, just a quick shout-out to you guys. Now, on to the calling sequences. I uh, just want to quickly cover that here in Maine, our season runs, we have an incredibly long night season for coyotes. Uh, our night season runs from uh, middle to later end of December all the way to the very end of August. And we're allowed to hunt coyotes at night during that entire time frame. We can hunt coyotes year round, but that's our nighttime season, okay? And so we have an open season on coyotes, but that's our night season. For us, when we say early season for coyote hunting, typically that's gonna be mid to late December into early January. And then when we say mid-season, that's gonna be anywhere from late January into uh, early March. And then when we say late season, that's really gonna take you into the early spring into the end of summer. So that's kind of how our season is laid out. And so when I explain these calling sequences and tactics, that's what I'm talking about. So for early season calling guys, I don't like to go crazy. I like to get out there. These coyotes haven't been pressured much in several months typically. And so I like to get out there and start with some uh, really gentle, non-aggressive sounds. Typically, I'll start with a rodent distress of some sort, whether that be a vol squeak or a mouse, you know, mouse chatter, things like that. Um, I'll play those on a pretty low volume, and I'll play those for a couple, you know, two to three minutes, and I'll pause. And usually, I'll pause for anywhere from uh, three to five minutes. And that pause is basically to see if anything's interested, anything's coming. Typically, if they're going to come to those active sounds of vol squeaks or mouse squeaks, they're gonna come in while that sound is actively playing. And I, I can't stress enough, if a coyote's coming into a sound, don't turn it off. Leave that sound on. Um, you can lower the volume slightly as the coyote comes in and closes that distance on you. Keep that coyote interested in that sound. But don't shut that sound off, guys. That has ruined a set for Brandon and I numerous times. Uh, or not numerous times, but we, we've learned our lesson, right? And so this is me kind of giving you those tips and as to what to do and not to do. So don't turn the call off if you've got a coyote coming in. Uh, next, if, if a coyote doesn't come into that, that rodent distress uh, or the light prey distress, move on to another prey uh, of some sort. Um, after you've given a little bit of a pause, move on to like <clears throat> a cottontail or jackrabbit or even a feral cat. I've seen a lot of guys have success with feral cats. So 
move on to another prey, maybe a little bit louder, maybe double your volume from what you're playing that rodent at. After you've played some, some more prey distress, uh, but a larger prey animal for, you know, three to four or five minutes, um, and, and I don't mean continuous, give like 30, 20 to 30 second pauses every couple minutes, maybe every minute, every minute and a half, pause for like 20 seconds, start the sound again. Um, if your call has a pause button, use that. That way you can pick up the sound kind of where you left off. If your call doesn't and it just has a, a mute button, uh, that's okay. Uh, if you mute the sound, it, it's gonna continue playing that sound file and then you can just unmute it and the sound will just pick back up where it left off. Um, so if it has a stop and a pause button, try to use your pause button for that. If you use stop, it's no big deal. It's just that when you go to start the sound back up, you're gonna start it at the beginning of the sound file. Not a big deal, um, but they, they'll have already heard that, that part of the sound. Moving on, uh, nothing comes into the prey, the larger prey distress at a little bit higher volume. You could bump that volume up a little bit and give them some more uh, of that same sound or maybe another prey distress of the same um, species. So if you got a cottontail sound, and it's kind of a slow, raspy, maybe maybe pick it up to a, a speedy a speedy cottontail sound, something that's like a little bit more, um, you know, not aggressive, but just a quicker sound, quicker cadence to it. And so that might pique their interest a little bit more. So um, <clears throat> we can't kill fox or bobcat here at night in Maine. And so usually I'm not trying to target fox or bobcat at night, but I will say I've called in numerous fox during this early part of the set. Uh, when I'm playing prey sounds. And, and that's just gonna happen. Um, a lot of states you can kill fox and bobcat at night. So um, if you can, this ought to work for that as well. So then <clears throat> nothing comes in for the prey. Um, that's when it's probably time to move on to some vocals. So I like to give maybe like a three to five minute wait between prey sounds and then moving into vocals. And so what I'll do is, is after the prey didn't work, I'll just wait, quiet, nothing. and. Uh, probably four or five minutes, I'll let off you know, some form of a howl. And usually that's gonna be an invite howl or an interrogation howl. And that's pretty much because I haven't heard a response from any coyotes at this point. If I've heard a response from coyotes, usually I'm gonna you know, try to figure out what they're trying to tell me and go that way. But um, if I haven't heard a response, I'm gonna give like a pretty non-aggressive either um, invite howl or interrogation howl. And male and female doesn't really matter at this time of the year. You can kind of go with whatever you like. Now, if I get a response from that howl, I'm probably going to be quiet for a little bit. I want to see if those coyotes are going to come in and try to figure out, you know, you know, link up with the, this coyote that it believes is in the field. Um, so I'm going to give them, you know, three to five minutes again. If nothing else, I'm probably going to throw out another howl series. At this point, I might go with a serenade or something like that to, to sound that there's more coyotes in that area and see if I can get something coming in. So early season non-aggressive, really just kind of trying to pique the interest of coyotes that haven't been called to in several months, and that's about it. Um, usually, I'll end my set with something aggressive if nothing's come in and I haven't heard anything. So usually I'll go to like maybe a, a light coyote fight or maybe some, some pup in distress. Pup in distress isn't super effective early season for us because the pups are starting to get a little older. It's, it's still definitely effective, um, it's just, it's not at its peak time uh, for effectiveness. So that's how I'll end a set. Nothing comes in after, you know, half an hour, 35, 40 minutes, um, I'm done. So I've gone through a complete sequence, I'm done. What's important to note here, guys, is there's no right or wrong way to do this. So if you find that uh, you're having, you know, not having success, um, try to mix it up. Mix up these sounds on these coyotes. You can effectively mix up sounds during a set and, and not, blow your set right so if a cottontail doesn't work you can absolutely go to bird distress you could absolutely go to feral cat the coyotes are not gonna think oh well there was a dying cottontail now there's a dying cat like what's going on here that's not really gonna happen if the coyotes are in earshot and you give them a sound they like or they're interested in typically they're gonna come in if they're not in earshot and you're just calling in an area they're just not there that happens and so it doesn't matter what you throw out there they're not there they're not gonna hear it so after a half an hour is about my sweet spot, 35 to 45 minutes is if I've gotten a response from coyotes and I'm really trying to work them, I'll stay a little longer. So after that, I'll move on to the next set and I'll try pretty much the same thing again at the next set. So that's early season. So when we move into mid season, mid season is a really fun time of year, but it's also a really challenging time of year. Coyotes don't really respond overly well to calls. They're, it's during their mating season and you really gotta play with them. You really gotta pique their interest 
And so things that work the best for Kyle during midseason, I'll almost always start my set with some form of Kyle vocals. Typically a female in interrogation howl or a female invite howl. And I'm trying to get the response of a male coyote uh, looking to probably breed a female during that meeting season, okay? And usually during that part of the season, you will get a response pretty, pretty quickly if they're there. Um, it doesn't mean they're coming in. And so I get a question a lot, which is um, how often do coyotes actually make a sound or, or howl that you actually end up calling in? And I gotta tell you, the, the majority of coyotes that we kill we never heard we never heard them they didn't howl at us they never responded they didn't challenge bark nothing they just came in and uh and that's the overwhelming majority of coyotes we kill so if you don't get a response from coyotes it does not mean they're not there keep working them keep calling uh keep scanning i can't stress that enough keep scanning with your scanner and uh and you'll have success eventually so um back to kind of the mid-season i'll start with that either you know invite interrogation i'll wait a good five six minutes okay sometimes that one single howl is is enough and uh after five six minutes if i've got nothing uh i may throw out another single howl or maybe a pair howl and so that pair howl is kind of to say hey there's a male female coyote in here maybe there's aggressive an aggressive male in the you know in the earshot of the call and they want to that male wants to come in and and take that female or you know is aggressive so they want to get in a fight or get in a scrap and so that can sometimes work if that doesn't work obviously between these howls you want to you want to give some time so you know five minutes or so silence nothing um maybe throw out some mating sounds at this point in the set you know you're you're 10 to 12 minutes into the set maybe throw out some you know light female kind of moaning kind of uh yipping uh, maybe a female that's not quite ready to be bred and, and, a, and a male is is on her tail and, and wants to um, Those are sounds that can work really well. And so there's plenty of those sounds out there guys um, You know James Bostek has a sound called uh, coyote moaner female coyote moaner and it's excellent He's also got a sound called uh, coyote boned and that's a really good mating sound as well um, just some really good sounds out there on honestly and um, so once you started playing those and, and you've got nothing and you're 15 to 20 minutes in your set um, you can make a decision at this point whether you want to stick with ma maybe like a mating sequence or you want to go to some prey distress um, it's never a bad idea to give coyotes you know a food source to, to think about so if you've had nothing maybe throw out some prey um, give them something to think about for food if they're hungry so go back to you know your either your cottontail or a bird distress or you know feral cat or even fawn at this point at this time of the year for us mid-season fawn distress can work really well coyotes get you know hungry and then the snow cover is really pretty dense and also the top layer is usually pretty crusty which allows the coyotes to walk across it and the deer's hooves go through it and they can't run as fast as coyotes and that's how coyotes you know run down deer here in maine at least in, in the northeast during the winter so that can work really well um, if you do decide to go prey to stress you can still definitely go back to coyote fights after if that doesn't work so later in your set if you're still there you still want to work them totally fine to go back to you know some aggressive fight sounds you can totally jump into something aggressive um, you can after that you can you know end your set with some pup distress i always like to end a set with some pup distress sometimes it'll really do the trick for a stubborn coyote or stubborn pair of coyotes that are you know they hear everything you've been playing but just nothing's really piqued their interest enough to come in um, into like an open field or something throw out some pup distress and you may be surprised with what you get so that would kind of do it there for a set in the mid-season um by by all means that's not the you know you know the gold standard but you you could get it done with that um and so then late season for us is going to be you know early spring all the way into summer and that's really the most fun part of our season it's when coyotes become really aggressive, really dominant, and they respond extremely well to the call. The reason being is females are starting to pup out. They're starting to have their litter of pups, and they're starting to, you know, hang out next to their dens, you know, really frequently. The snow cover is pretty well gone. They're not overly hungry at this time because the, the field mice are starting to come out. They're able to get a lot of really, you know, smaller prey, rodents, things like that. So they're not overly hungry. They're not going to be super peaked by your, your prey sounds, although they will if they're hungry um, but this is the time when you know fight sounds and uh, like challenge barks and howls and you know your pup distress is really going to be effective 
Um, one of my favorite sounds during this time of the year, and really any time of the year, but this time of year, especially in the late season, is gonna be PT Submissive Pup. Excellent, excellent sound. Not overly aggressive, but it's a, it's a very um, high pitched kind of coyote yipping, whining sound that uh, it really seems to get the job done. So, you know, we've killed numerous coyotes on that sound. So great job, Predator Tactics, on that one. Um, but anyway, guys, so that time of the year, you know, start your sets with probably some howls. Uh, move into, if you want to do some prey, you can. If that doesn't work, move into aggressive. Go go fights, go um, pup fights, you know, a den, TT den raid, a Tony Tebby den raid is a freaking awesome sound during that time of the year. Um, he's got another one, a new one now. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on the name, but Tony comes out with sounds all the time. So he's continuously putting out sounds for us to continuously mix it up on these coyotes. And that's really changed the game, at least for us. Um, but you know they're not the, the sounds aren't free guys these guys put a ton of work into their sounds so they're not free um and and they're well worth you know the five six seven bucks per sound that you pay i know boss tech sells his sounds in a in a sound pack so you when you buy a pack you get like 15 to 20 sounds and they're all great i mean they truly are he puts a lot of time into them anyway guys that's kind of it i mean i, I feel like i've rambled some but it's all good information it's all good stuff it answers questions that i get all the time so if this is something you're interested in, I think you, you probably would have benefited from it. Um, I'm super interested to know what works for you guys. I totally don't have to tell me the sounds you're using. Um, I don't like to give out the sounds I'm using exactly. I mean, one of the questions I get all the time is, hey, what sounds are you using right now? <laughs> and I hate that question because like, I always answer it fairly vague with like, oh, I'm using fight sounds or I'm using distress sounds or whatever, because I don't really like to give out the exact sounds I'm using. Mostly because the, the land we sh you know we use, we, it's kind of shared. You know, multiple people hunt it, and that's okay. But it's good to mix up these sounds on coyotes. You know, I love getting a new property and seeing a guy out there that runs Fox Pro because I know he doesn't have the same sounds I have on my Icotech, and so that's all well and good. You know, I'm I'm more than happy to see that Fox Pro sitting out there because I know I have just as good a chance of calling them in with my with the sounds on my Icotech. So. Um, like I said back at the beginning of the video, guys, it doesn't matter what you use, they'll all kill coyotes. It's really in how you portray the set. You've got to put out a, a picture here, paint a picture for these coyotes that what they hear is real, real. you know, that you've got to, to paint that picture for them, set the stage, and if if you do that right, and you you know you set up properly, you, you played your wind correctly, you're, you know, the coyotes are coming downwind of you, so they're not gonna get your wind. Um, man, you're gonna have success. And honestly, for the guys that say, I've been hunting for months, I haven't called a coyote in. Let me just tell you, it took me almost six months to call in my first coyote alone. I called in coyotes with, with someone prior to that that helped, helped me learn how to hunt. But it was about six months into calling for me before I called in and killed my first coyote. So let that be known. I mean, it's not easy. It's difficult, but it's fun and it's challenging. And that's really what keeps me coming back. And so hopefully, you know, anything I told you guys in this video is helpful. If you did learn something and you want to support the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Uh, helps me a ton. We're closing in on like um, 2,700 subscribers, which is just awesome to me. Um, and then lastly, guys, I want to let you know, I did just launch a merchandise website. Um, it is ownthehuntgear.com and if you place an order on the website, you're going to get a very personalized thank you video message in your email from me um, relatively relatively instantly from the time you make your purchase. There are times where you know a purchase comes in at, at night while I'm sleeping. I'll see it the next day. I'll wake up and, and I'll get you guys a, a personalized thank you video. So that means the world to me. And then right now, I'm also running a giveaway on our Facebook page. Um, obviously, that closes March 10th. So... Um, not a ton of time, but um, if you see that and you see this video in the meantime, uh, head on over to our Facebook page, Own the Hunt, and uh, check out our giveaway there. It's for a hoodie and a hat. We're going to be picking two winners uh, March 10th. So with that, guys, that's pretty much it. If you have questions or something I didn't cover, drop that in the comments below. I love interacting with you guys. It is so much fun to me. It's cool to know that, you know, my videos reach a, a broad audience and that, you know, people have questions that I can help them with. And that means a lot to me. So if you got questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to answer your questions. Uh, you can also shoot me an email. My email is in the description of this video. So anyway, guys, with that, that's about it. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time on On The Hunt, I'll see you later.